My name is Daniel Roy, and today I'm going to demonstrate 10 levels of three card Monty. Now level one is how the game was originally played. It used a black queen, another perfectly identical black queen, and a third perfectly identical black queen. And they would just mark one of the cards with a big X to distinguish it from the other one. Now the problem with the black queens is that there's so much ink on the cards that the marks are kind of hard to see. So level two is how the game was subsequently played, where they would use a, a red ace, and then they would use another red ace, and they would use a third red ace. And they'd mark one of the cards, but the markings are way easier to see because of all the space on the cards. Now level three is the rather obvious next step. Instead of marking the cards, just use contrasting cards. Like, for example, a red ace, and then two black queens. And that's how the game was played for many years, and that's how we're going to play it today. So, watch very closely. I can toss the money card down in the middle, or I can toss it down on the end. And then I'm going to mix the cards around a little. So here's level four. I will toss the money card, the ace of diamonds, down in the middle, and then I'll mix the cards around. Now, it can be confusing because I crossed my hands, but you probably saw that the money card went over here, right? No? Well, let's try again for level five. I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly this time. I will toss the money card down on the end, and then I'll mix the cards around again. Now imagine that you had some money in your hand and you were trying to decide where to bet. Would you bet on card number one, or card number two, or card number three? Most people here would bet on card number two in the middle, which is what I'm hoping that you'll do, because the money card is back over here on the end. Now, I should mention that the game isn't played like this anymore. It was too difficult to keep track of the two black queens and the red ace. People found it too confusing. So level six is how the game is played these days, with one black queen and two red aces. And that's how we'll play it going forward. For level seven, I'll show you how the game is being played on the streets of New York City, where it is still being used to separate suckers from their money. Now remember, this is the money card. This is the card to follow. These days, the operator will toss the money card down, and then he'll show you that these cards here are both red. So when you bet on this card and find out that it too is red, uh, some people theorize that in fact all three cards are red, which is true, just like at the beginning. All three cards are red. I mean, this card here is red, and uh, this card here is red, and this card here is red. So all three cards are red except for this one, which is black. Well, for level eight, I'll show you how the game works, and I will explain why it's so easy to lose. When the operator tosses the money card down, you have to keep your eye on the money card. You cannot so much as glance at either of these two red cards here because the moment you look at those cards, they'll switch the money card for one of those red aces. You see, they always keep the money card where you least expect it. So now that you know how the game works, for level nine, why don't you pretend we're playing for real? Now, remember, this is the card you wanna follow. So don't uh, get distracted by these two red aces here. This is the card that you care about. So I will toss the money card down. And remember, don't watch this red ace here. Don't watch this red ace here. The card you want to follow is the black queen. And I will mix these cards as slowly as possible. Now, once again, imagine you have some money in your hand. Which card would you bet on? Card number one, card number two, or card number three? Um, I think I put a little bend in the corner of that card. Oops. Let me uh, straighten that out. Oh, lucky me. Now for level 10, we're going to take this many, many steps further. You might remember that at the very beginning I explained that when they used to use identical cards, they would take a marking pen and they would put a big X on the money card to distinguish it from the others. I'm going to do the same thing, but on the back of the card. So I will put a big X on the back of the money card, and this will mean that it'll be very, very easy to tell that Queen of Clubs apart 
uh, from the back. It'll be very easy to distinguish the card from the two red aces. Now I'm going to add one more detail. I'm also going to tear a corner off of the money card. So now it should be completely obvious which one the money card is because it literally has a corner torn out of it. Now I will leave this corner down here under the pen. Now watch closely because I'm going to mix those cards around. And I have to tell you, it's truly amazing how many people would bet on what seems to be the surest thing. Because you can see that that corner is an ace of diamonds and it matches perfectly front and back. And that is why you should never ever play three card Monty. And I really do mean that. You really should never ever play three card Monty. Even after you've seen all these levels, and even if you think you understand the mechanics of the game, you should still never play. Why? Well, let's imagine you're walking along the street and you see a game of Monty. Now, this might be a game of Monty that uses cards, or it might use discs with markings on them. It could even use some shells and a pea or bottle caps and a little paper ball. It doesn't matter what the props are, it's the same game every single time, and it's the same scam every single time. Now, the words scam and con are often used interchangeably, but there are some subtle differences between them, although they're both very applicable to three card Monty. So what's the difference between a scam and a con? Well, a scam is just a crooked game that you can't win. What makes three card Monty a con is the little bit when I accidentally bend up the corner of the card, because for a moment you think you're cheating me, and that's the definition of a con. Now the way three card Monty is really played on the street, it's both a scam and a con. It's a scam because it's certainly a crooked game, but there are also parts of it where you will be made to feel as though you're going to cheat the operator, but of course, he's going to cheat you and that's why it's a con. So you might be walking along and you see a crowd of people and some people are betting and some people are winning and some are losing. And you might think, oh, well, I should just join in the crowd because it's all of us against that one guy running the scam. No, it's all of them against you because every person you see there with maybe one or two exceptions is part of the con. If you ever see a player bet and win, they are a shill. They are part of the game. They're working with and working for the operator, the person who's actually mixing the cards around. If you see someone egging people on and trying to get them to bet more money and trying to stir up the crowd, they're also part of the game. If you see a very large, imposing guy standing near the back, he's also part of the scam. He's there to make sure no one does anything outrageous. This is a very carefully orchestrated con game where the entire team is working together to find the best possible mark on the street and then to take them off for as much money as possible. And there's this old adage that, oh, they'll always let you win the first time. If con men did that, uh, they'd be broke. Uh, that's not true at all. They will cheat you the very first chance they get and then they will leave. They may make you think you've won and make you think that you're going to be given money, but they won't do it. They will never pay you off, even if you were to find the right card. How? Well, there are a few methods. Often the operator will say something like, oh, I'm only going to take the highest bet on each round. So if you happen to bet on the right card, the operator would simply signal to one of the shills to out bet you. And of course, then if they bet on the right card, the same one you did, and they win, you think, oh man, I should have bet more on that card. And then of course you might bet more the next time. If instead they bet on the wrong card and they're wrong and then they lose their money, you think, wow, I got out bet by this idiot. This person didn't even know where the card was and they bet more than me and that's why they won. And of course, as a result, you'll be even more motivated to bet money on the next one. The other reason that you should never go into the crowd is because often they'll also just pickpocket you. If they're gonna con you out of your money anyway, they might as well just steal your wallet or your phone or anything else on you. So don't even go into the crowd. It's a rather dangerous space because you are amongst an entire team whose sole purpose is to take your money. Now, of course, three-card Monty is also illegal in many places, so that's another great reason not to play. Another part of three-card Monty that draws people in is that if you watch the operator play when he's just playing against the shills, he will not mix the cards too quickly, and he also is not going to use any of the sleight of hand that actually secretly switches the cards for each other so that you can't follow the game. So what you're gonna watch is a guy throwing cards around and you're going to see people inconceivably betting on the wrong card and losing their money. And when they do bet on the right card, it was easy for you to follow as well. So you're thinking, okay, well that guy's an idiot because I could see plain as day that the card went on the end and he bet in the middle and he just lost his money. And then of course you see on the next round someone bets on the card that you think it is and they win like $5,000 or something and it's like, 
I could have been that person. And I'm smarter than all these people who keep getting it wrong. I'm smart like that guy who got it right. And if I just walk up to the game, I will win a lot of money too. And that is the very first step in a whole series of errors that you could make if you don't just keep walking. Three Card Monty essentially preys on our desire to make a quick dollar, to get something for nothing, and to feel like, oh, we just, we got that guy. We were better than that guy. A con game fundamentally puts you in a position of psychological power, or at least, perceived psychological power. You think that you're about to cheat this guy because he's just too stupid to hold on to his money. But actually, you have walked into a whole context in which you are being manipulated to do exactly what the hustler wants you to do. So it is the illusion of having great power when in reality, you are completely powerless. So the moral of the story is the only way to win a con game is to simply not engage. And this is a scam and a con that has been designed to take advantage of our ingrained flaws and our ingrained desires. And it is something that has existed for hundreds of years and will certainly exist for hundreds of years into the future because it just works so damn well. So on that rather depressing note, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel and following me on social media. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I teach magicians of all levels, or if you want to book a show, you can contact me by email or on my website. Links are in the description, along with the credits and the inspirations for this video. See you next time.